Now let's move to the West where Togo has called a high-level meeting of the UN Security Council on Monday to discuss terrorism being a threat to peace and security to Africa. Now the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon said military advances alone will not bring an end to terrorism. He stressed a holistic region-wide approach like that of the Sahel region. Togo's president said African countries must be given the means to combat terrorism themselves through regional cooperation. All countries represented at the meeting said the root causes of terrorism are murd in poverty and unemployment. Those in attendance included the Moroccan foreign minister, the vice foreign minister of the DPRK and Argentina's deputy minister of foreign affairs. Let's hear more on this development and we are joined live by Nathan King in New York and Malte Brosig of the Wits University in Johannesburg. Nathan, let me start off with you there in New York. Now, a high-level meeting of the UN Security Council to discuss terrorism in Africa called there by Togo. How important is this debate on terrorism? Well, very important. And Togo, of course, called this debate because uh, they hold the rotating presidency of the UN Security Council for the month of May. And President Nasingwe basically uh, trying to highlight that this is not just a regional problem when you talk about West Africa or North Africa uh, with uh, Al-Qaeda or Boko Haram in West Africa or Al-Shabaab uh, in the East. This is a continent-wide problem. And even though we've seen military successes against Al-Shabaab and in northern Mali, this isn't the end of the problem. Uh, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon basically saying, uh, if we keep on doing this military-style solution, we're just shifting uh, the terrorism from one state uh, to another. So you're right, the holistic approach, what does that mean? It means more development. It means tackling the chronic unemployment, especially among men. 70% of people in the continent uh, 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 are men under the age uh, of 20 uh, who are susceptible uh, to influence of, of terrorist groups. Also, looking at the links between terrorism and the drug gangs uh, of South America and also the mafias uh, uh, in Europe as well. So all this is going to take a lot more time than just a peacekeeping uh, deployment by Amazon or, or the, the UN peacekeeping force set to uh, deploy in Mali in July. And it's a continent-wide uh, approach with also people who can help fund this uh, going forward as well. Let's see where it goes from today, but at least uh, there's a, an awareness that this is a continent-wide problem. All right, a Malta there in Johannesburg. Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, um, you know, Al-Shabaab in Somalia, terrorism in the Sahel region. How best can African countries respond to the problem of terrorism? I think the key to um, addressing African terrorism or terrorism in Africa is to, to strengthen uh, statehood in Africa. Um, that means basically uh, having uh, capabilities, uh, having trained police forces, um, being uh, able to implement the being imp able to implement the rule of law. Uh, let's not forget that uh, basically um, the events in, in Mali as well as in Somalia are consequences of uh, of failed states. Um, I think African countries can also still um, improve on the side of uh, more regional. Uh, cooperation in terms of uh, exchanging right. more intelligence, of creating intelligence. This all has been designed by the African Union to some extent, but there is still a lot of um, um, room uh, to improve on this side. All right. Nathan, so far though, what has been the reaction uh, by member states and patrons to this debate? You know, it's interesting because some, a lot of African problems are, are kind of forgotten by the permanent five members of the Security Council uh, often uh, here. But you can see there's an urgency. The Americans, for example, Ambassador Susan Rice, uh, really understanding uh, that the consequences of, of war, for example, in Libya uh, with the Benghazi attack and then the spillover of weapons into northern Mali that led to uh, the catastrophic situation there. Uh, the attack in Algeria just across the border. All these things are interrelated and interlinked. And I think our guest is absolutely right. There is a real need here to understand that its capacity buildings of African institutions uh, helped out uh, by countries who also uh, suffer uh, from terrorism uh, to make sure they all work together. All right, Amalti, a final one there to you very briefly now. The United Nations counter-terrorism panel dealing with Al-Qaeda strengthened its work and cooperation with related UN bodies to address the evolving threats of terrorism on the continent. Now, as an expert do you, on these issues, do you think progress has been made in this area and how does the future look? 
Um, the answer is divided, yes, yes and no. If we look at cases of Somalia and, and, and Mali, we can clearly see some progress on the operational side. So engaging uh, terrorist activities with military force to a certain extent has paid off. But the question is, you know, how many casualties um, did we already receive? And um, uh, what I would be concerned is that, of course, the military or counterinsurgency strategy itself alone isolated from other socioeconomic factors certainly cannot pay off in the long run. So the concern is that the, uh, the territory gained on the, on the ground might be lost uh, very, uh, very quickly as well if the circumstances are not right. And I think the UN is doing, uh, putting in an effort to comprehensively address security issues and connect it with, uh, with other issues of, uh, of, for instance, development and socioeconomic well-being. All right. Um, uh, Malte Brosig of the Witz University in Johannesburg and Nathan King joining us from New York. Thank you both for your updates.